welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about my favorite romance books that I've read so far this year. Also, before we get into it, I just want to say I apologize if you can hear my AC in the background. Normally I turn it off when I'm filming because it is very loud, but I can't do that right now. It, I cannot. It is too hot. I'm sorry. I will not suffer just for the sake of a video. <laughs> so I apologize. We're also filming in kind of a new location. This is my dining room area. I never film over here, but it is the coolest spot in my apartment. So we're just gonna make it work. <laughs> Hot girl summer is now sweaty girl summer and it's not a good time. Okay, so I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven romances here that are definitely my favorites of the year. I've been reading so many great ones. They're kind of in no order. I do know which ones are like my top favorites, but other than that, they're all kind of on the same level. I guess I'll start with the most recent one, which was also the most surprising, and that is Bloody Heart by Sophie Lark. This is the fourth book in her Brutal Birthright series. The reason why this is surprising is because it has the secret baby trope, which I hate, but somehow, Sophie Lark made me love it. So this is a mafia romance. We're following Dante and Simone, who fell in love, but then they broke up because of circumstances and haven't seen each other for like nine years and now they are back in each other's life and Dante does not know that Simone had a kid that is his. The reason why I loved this is because I really felt the epicness of their romance. I felt how much they loved each other. They were definitely soulmates in my opinion. I loved Dante. Dante is a man. He's this very like big tough scary looking dude who will like fight people in a second but he also worships the ground that Simone walks on. She is his queen and he knows it and he like the amount of like love and respect that he treats her with oh, I loved it. I loved it so much and the secret baby part of this worked for me because there were legitimate reasons why she kept her pregnancy from him and her child because of him being so ingrained in the mafia life. She was worried for the safety of her child and didn't want him in that world. So it made sense and I loved this so much. Definitely my favorite of the series so far. The next two that I have are part of the same series and that is Praise and Eyes on Me by Sarah Kate. These are books one and two in her Salacious Clerics Club series which I'm loving. I really don't know which one I love more. So this series is following a group of friends who own a kink club where people can go and explore their kinks in a very consensual way. So the first book, Praise, has the ex-boyfriend's dad trope. There's sort of a misunderstanding between the main character and her ex's father where he thinks that she's his new secretary in a sex way and after he realizes his mistake he decides to hire her as his actual secretary. Um, so it also has like a boss employee dynamic, kind of office-y romance. I really loved this one. I love the couple. And then book two, Eyes on Me, is uh, a step-sibling romance, which is another trope that I do not normally like, but in here it worked for me. In this one, the main character is a cam girl, and one day her stepbrother is just browsing cam girls and he comes across his little stepsister and he's like shocked but also very intrigued and so he requests a private chat with her and they kind of start on this very taboo relationship but yeah i i just loved both of these so much very excited to continue with the series. The next one I have is Pestilence by Laura Thalassa. This is the first book in her Four Horsemen series, which is a post-apocalyptic kind of fantasy romance where the Four Horsemen come down onto Earth to end humanity. So this one is following Pestilence, who is spreading plague around the world. At the start of the book, the main character not only tries to kill him, but does kill him. She shoots him with an arrow and then pours gasoline on him and lights him on fire and he dies. But little does she know, he has healing powers and so he heals, resurrects, and when he comes back to life, he's obviously very pissed off that she just murdered him in a very brutal way. So he kidnaps her and forces her to travel with him across the world, spreading his plague and watching humans die. And he wants her to be the last human that dies so that he can get his revenge on her. But of course, through the book, they fall in love. What I loved about this one so much is that it kind of had aspects of like alien romances because he's not human and he's not familiar with any human 
emotions or customs or anything and she really has to teach him how to do things like teach him how to eat human food and he's like he starts feeling different things different emotions that he doesn't know what they are it's so cute i loved him as a character and i i was obsessed with this book next we have two books from another author who you guys will not be surprised at all to see these <laughs> um and that is jennifer hartman so the two that i have are lotus and still beating which are two romances that i have just fallen in love with still beating is probably my all-time favorite romance um, i've talked about this one endlessly so far this year this follows a woman and her sister's fiance they get abducted by this serial killer who likes to abduct strangers or people who aren't in a relationship and he keeps them captive in his basement and tortures them, um, sexually assaults them and his goal is to make his victims fall in love with each other and then he kills them after they've fallen in love. It's very sick, very twisted, very dark, but the actual majority plot of this book is about what happens to them after they escape and how they deal with trauma and trying to put the pieces back to their life. A lot of it also focuses on the toxicity of trauma bonding, how that can just further enable negative behaviors and doesn't promote a lot of healing. I just, I, I love this book. This is the, a book that like touched me on such a deep level on like any other romance that I've ever read. And then the other Jennifer Hartman book that I also loved, also gave five stars is Lotus. I read this with my patrons and Almost everybody really, really loved this. So this one follows a guy named Oliver who was kidnapped when he was a kid and he was held captive in a bunker for 22 years and now he has escaped and he's in a world now that is very, very different from the one that he left. So everything is very new to him. He's learning how to not only navigate life not being held captive, but trying to navigate life in a world 22 years in the future from when he went into the bunker. Also trying to navigate life now as an adult. He's never lived as an adult in society. He reconnects with his childhood best friend who never moved on from her best friend being kidnapped as a kid. I love this so much. Oliver is a very unique character, unlike anyone I've ever read before, and I just fell in love with him. I never really get crushes on like romantic heroes in books, but I was crushing on Oliver. I loved him so much. And then the last one that I have here is one of my favorite books of the year, and that is Sword Heart by T. King Fisher. This is a fantasy romance that is like so cozy and quirky and fun. It's about this woman named Halla who is set to inherit a lot of money after the man that she was working for died and left her his whole estate. But his family wants the money for themselves. So they're trying to force Hala to marry someone in the family that she doesn't want to marry in order to take the inheritance from her. And so they lock her in her bedroom until she agrees to marry this person. But she's refusing to do that. So at the start of the book, she decides she's going to kill herself. Everything that happens in this book, even the dark things are very like fun and light. And so in the room, there is this like ancient sword hanging above the bed. So she pulls it down and decides she's gonna use that to kill herself. And the second that she pulls the sword out of its sheath, blue smoke appears and this man is suddenly in the room with her and he tells her that he is an immortal trapped inside the sword and he's now magically bound to protect her. And so together they fight against her family and travel across the country to find a lawyer who can help her get her inheritance. Through the course of their journey, they're faced with a lot of different situations, bandits, monsters, and he's always protecting her through these things. They have a very grumpy sunshine dynamic. He's grumpy, she's sunshine, and they end up falling in love. It is such an amazing slow burn romance, but it's also very fun and funny and light and cozy, and I just am obsessed with this book. So those are all of my favorite romances that I've read so far this year. Definitely let me know in the comments what is your favorite romance you've read this year. Hopefully in the next half of the year, I have just as many more favorites. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!